Hello and welcome. I recently came across an interesting video on burnishing. There are several iterations of these tools on YouTube, but I particularly like the one built by the person named on the screen. I can't pronounce his name, so I'm not going to try. But I give all attribution to him for the design and inspiration behind this build. I will complement this build by also making a diamond burnishing tool. G'day, I'm Steve-O and welcome to the Outback Shed. I'm using 6202 bearings and these have an outside diameter of 35mm, an internal diameter of 15mm and they're 11mm wide. One of the burnishing balls is 19mm in diameter and the other is 5.8. I'm going to make two. The body of the tools and the pins will be made from 4140 as I have some bar stock of this grade and I'll use aluminium for the end caps. The diamond tool is one I purchased to be used for dressing grinding wheels. It's not designed for burnishing, but it's a place to start. It is however sharp, and I would have thought that for use as a burnisher it would need to be smooth and rounded, but we'll see how it goes. This video has four parts. The ball tool build, the diamond tool build, testing the tools, and assessment and conclusions. I'll set up a piece of 32mm 4140 in the Toolmaster and turn a step 25mm in diameter by 15mm long. I'll use a parting tool to cut a gutter for the thread to run into as I don't have a 3mm button tool. The carbide threading form insert is too small to accurately align with the gauge. However, alignment can be achieved by bringing the side of the insert up to the side of the gauge. This 1.5mm pitch thread is not the prettiest I've ever cut, but it should clean up fine. Next I need to bore a hole for the ball, just slightly larger than the nominal size. I did think about oversizing the hole and pressing in a brass sleeve, but I decided against that.
I'll next make the retaining cap. I need to bring this close to the size of the tool at a dimension from the knurling tables to give the best opportunity for a successful knurl. Following this procedure, I very rarely have a cross knurl. Target diameter is 31.57 millimeters. I set the camera up on the top slide, but it didn't focus on the knurl, and by the time I'd reviewed the footage, the knurl was complete. But I did get a good knurl. A drill followed by a boring bar brings a hole to 23.5 millimeters for the internal thread. The thread runs up against an internal shoulder and conventional threading poses the risk of the tool contacting the shoulder while the lead screw is still engaged. To overcome this risk, I will use the Joe Pye methodology of running the lathe in reverse and using a left-handed threading tool. This system just works. I use the threading tool to cut the internal gutter for starting the thread. Yep, that's just fine. Chamfer's all around and it can be parted off. At this stage, the part is not complete. I've left it oversized. Final fitting and some adjustments will be needed when the bearing has been installed in the tool. Now to the mill. Firstly, I'll bore an 11mm relief hole to make advancing the end mill easier. Running the 12mm end mill back and forth, the slot for the bearing is cut. I can then machine the shank to square for manning in the tool bust.
I have a Seiko 6mm button tool and this makes a nice round to finish it off. As I don't have a 15mm reamer, I'll bore the holes 14mm right through, then use a 16mm drill for the top hole. This means that the pin will be stepped 16mm, then 15mm for the bearing, and 14mm for the outside mount and circlet. The drills will produce slightly oversized holes, but I can cater for that when I make the pins. It's just a short job then to deburr the remaining edges for the diamond file. I'll make the pins from a piece of 25mm 4140 bar. This insert is not producing the finish I would expect from 4140, so I'll replace it. Hmm, that didn't seem to make much difference, did it? The pin is slightly larger than 16mm, but that's what it needs to be to fit the hole.
15mm is for the bearing. Lastly I'll cut the groove for the circlip then part it off. Then I'll clean it up in the Sheraton. Now for the diamond tool. I have an off cut of mild steel bar left over from other projects. One piece is the right size of the diamond tool, it's about 30mm square. I'll machine the sides and tops so it will fit in the Colchester tool post. That way it can be used in both layers. I'll drill and tap a couple of 6mm holes to take grub screws to retain the diamond bar. Having two screw locations will provide the opportunity of having two different preload options, one soft and the other harder. This tool is somewhat of an experiment to see if it will actually work. Whether or not a wheel dressing diamond can do the job and allow for some experimentation with different tool pressures.
I would expect that some experimentation would be needed to determine what pressures works best and which materials would need different pressures. If successful, two different springs or even two different tools may be needed. I'll use the dial gauge to align the tool post and the holder, then use drills mounted in the Colchester spindle to drill and rim the hole for the diamond bar. With the final hole, I'll make a test fit to ensure that the bar doesn't quite fit. This will ensure that I have enough metal left over for the reamer. I have a spare chuck plate mounted on the spindle. This is to protect the spindle nose while I'm drilling. I would never use a lathe that does not have the spindle protected. Any damage to the nose will be considered major damage to the lathe. Thank <laughs> you. 
the diamond bar is 100 millimeters long, so I'll need to shorten it. A test fit and I'm happy with it. I'm going to blue the ball burnishes but not the diamond tool. Some redesign work may be required and additional work may be needed. I'll take this opportunity to blue some T-nuts that I made some time ago for the Toolmaster faceplate. Time to assemble the bearings. This now provides the information needed to finish the retaining caps. They need to screw onto the tools and retain the ball but still allow it to rotate. I'll machine a stub arbor to mount the caps on. The thread on this piece of aluminium has gone much better than those did on the 4140.
The front hole is brought to size just short of the ball diameter. Then a taper is cut on the inside to allow clearance for the ball. Now I have the correct fit, the front face can be finished machined. I need to relieve the thread on the rear of the cap. To do this I'll use a left handed boring bar. These don't get used often but when you need one there's just no substitute. This is a boring bar holder I made some time ago. It's very useful for holding small to medium sized tooling. It mounts the tool out from the tool post and provides better visibility than if the tool was mounted directly into the tool post. I did film that build, but I haven't posted it on YouTube. Time to try them out. This 25mm piece of bar is the only mild steel I have. I'll take a light finishing cut and then run the burnishing tools over it for comparison. I'll start with the ball tool and on a fine feed with plenty of oil to lubricate the part. The surface improvement is better than I expected. I'll make two passes, one in forward feed and the other in reverse feed. Next, I'll insert the diamond bar into the tool and fit the retaining screw. This screw will provide light compression. Starting out some vibration is noted and the surface is rough. It looks like the tool is bouncing on the surface. Increasing the tool pressure eliminates this and it shows a marked improvement. I'm using plenty of coolant with this tool as the diamond needs to be kept cool as well as lubricated. The surface improvement is less than was seen for the ball tool, so I'll make three passes.
Dragging a steel rule over the parts provides a clear indication of surface smoothness. The peaks and valleys from the carbide tool give a feel of roughness not felt on the ball burnish section. However, the diamond burnish part does feel rough. Placing the rule on top shows a clear reflection on the ball burnishing but not on the diamond burnish part of the bar. A micrometer comparison shows that the ball burnish section has reduced in diameter by a very small amount, but the diamond burnish part has not. I'll cut the test piece off the bar and take a closer look at it under the microscope. Some experimentation is needed with both tools, both in terms of materials, speeds, feeds and tool pressures. The diamond tool was always a long shot. The diamond is just not designed for the application I'm using it for. It is designed to true grinding wheels and not burnished steel. It is sharp and it would need to be smooth. I will seek some advice on how it can be reshaped, if at all, or if other options for the correct diamond are available. That said, it was not expensive and I'll persevere with it. The ball burnish section shows a marked improvement, however the diamond burnishing is somewhat disappointing. I'm very happy with the results of the ball burnishing tools and they will get plenty of use in the future. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video and found it of value. If so, please consider subscribing and liking. Be productive, be creative, but most importantly, be safe in your shed. Catch you next time.